Now, in this video lecture, we're going to see the radon nicotine theorem, which is so important that we have its name in the title of this unit. And in order to um, talk about the radon nicotine theorem, we need to go through the notion of absolute continuity between measures. So we say that a measure nu is absolutely continuous with respect to another measure mu if we have the following property. Every set A that has mu measure zero also has nu measure zero. Okay. This is what it means to say nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu, which is uh, denoted for, shortly by this uh, double less symbol that we have here. Let's see an example to uh, improve our uh, intuition of some measure being absolutely continuous with respect to another. So consider mu c as the counting measure on R. That's a very brutal measure on R. It, uh, for every set, it will tell you the measure of the set is the number of points. Of course, then typically, if we get a set from uh, real numbers, that set will be infinite. So typically sets will have infinite measure unless the sets are finite themselves. So this funny measure, it actually is a measure. And then if, if uh, we take a borrow set A, its measure is infinite when A is infinite, when A has infinite elements in it. Its measure is finite and has a certain number n when the set A has exactly n elements in it. And for some A. And if the measure of a set is zero, that only happens when the set is the empty set. So if a M, the measure of a set, uh, a set is zero, it, that set is uh, empty. Okay? And that implies that the Lebesgue measure of that set is also zero. Okay? And therefore, we can denote from the pre previous definition, what does it mean? So when the measure, a measure being zero always implies that another measure is zero, we denote it by writing this other measure saying it is absolutely continuous with respect to the first one. So what we just said here is the counting measure, whenever it's zero, it implies that the Lebesgue measure is zero. And that means we can denote the Lebesgue measure is absolutely continuous with respect to the counting measure. Okay. And a quick remark here, the converse is not true. Okay? If uh, this implication holds for every A, doesn't mean this implication will hold for every A. And you can see that the counting measure is not absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure. Why is it? Well, because there exist some sets A that have measure zero, but that does not imply that the counting measure of A is zero. Just take A to be any non-empty set that has Lebesgue measure zero, like any point, any isolated point. So we can take here, here we can take A to be just the set that contains one point, let that, let, let that point be one. Okay. This, this set has Lebesgue measure zero, but the counting measure is not zero, the counting measure is a one. So the converse is false in general. And now here, let us um, consider one case, the case when a measure nu has a radon nicotine derivative or a density that we denote little f here with respect to the measure mu. Okay, so, so that, that is, suppose nu of any set A can be computed by integrating f on that set A, but against the measure mu. So in that case, if there is a density of nu with respect to mu, in that case, nu will be absolutely continuous with respect to mu. And uh, why is that? Well, well, we can see if A, if the measure mu of A is zero, that mean, that will imply 
that the integral of any function on that set A is also zero because this is the same as integrating on omega f indicator a, this product of f by the indicator a, the mu. And the function here that we are integrating, f indicator a, this function equals zero almost everywhere. So the, the integral is zero. Okay. Um, in summary, let's erase this. In summary, what we just proved is that if mu of a certain set A equals zero, this implies that nu of the same set A equals zero, and this is exactly the very definition of nu being absolutely continuous with respect to mu. And now the main point of this video lecture is to ask uh, the opposite. Uh, if mu is absolutely continuous with respect to nu, does it imply that it has a density? Yes, this will be the converse implication. What, what we just saw is, we just saw that whenever nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu, we could conclude, no, we just saw that whenever the density of mu with respect to nu exists, then mu, nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. And now we're asking about the reverse implication. That is, assuming that nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu, would it have a density? Well, this is the Radon-Nicodin theorem that we're going to talk about in the next part of this video lecture.